welcome to the second part of when i did the first video i knew that some of you were waiting a long time for this but i didn't know there were so many of you you guys really like bass don't you well, I promise you that this time we will cover more interesting topics than just general singing skills. Let's have a look on the first vocal technique, vocal fry. And while we're in it, let's wrap up chest fry mix too. But before we do, I want to tell you a few things. I don't know how, but the last song, Tosso Coin to Your Witcher, has over 45,000 views right now, which is like insane. Like, from where do you guys come from? It's not been even a month since I uploaded the video. Uh, I can't even express how grateful I am to all of you. Thank you so much. The new video, new song that I'm gonna be uploading, I'm trying really hard to make it in time till the uh, end of February. So, I hope I can make it. And... I hope you will like it as much as the as the last song, so stick around for that. Okay, next thing. Uh, in the past few weeks, I created a Discord server called Bass Singing Nation. All of you that are interested in bass singing, want to share their skills, recordings, ideas, know all the news in the bass world, meet some new friends, uh, join the Discord server, link is on the screen and on, in the description. It's already more than a hundred of us on that server. So thanks to all of you who already joined. It's it's amazing. Then this is probably the last talking video, except for the streams that I'm gonna be making before this event. So I just wanted to inform you that I'm gonna be coming to Humphrey's concert in Prague, which is gonna be on March 9th. And also to the Pentatonix concert, which is gonna be 22nd of March. So guys, if you're coming there, it would be lovely to meet. So text me on Discord or Instagram. And the last thing, uh, since I created the Discord server and made the last video, there's been a lot of comments and people saying stuff like, I have a four octave chest range and I can do subharmonics double OC and on and on. So guys, I would like to remind you the first point of my previous video. Be a good singer more than be a bass singer. I understand if you're doing bass just for fun and you want to learn some new vocal techniques. Uh, but if you're going to be recording yourself or singing for a band or a choir, just if you really want to learn singing, there's no use to your notes if you don't know how to use them. Pitch. Timber, dynamics, vocal control, stability, placement, resonance, emotions, all of this is much more important than have a big ass range and nothing to do with it. And if you're 15 and you really believe that you have a vocal range on a tier of Jeff Castellucci, you need to learn more about music theory. Okay, let's go for the actual topic of this video. Technique number one, walk a fry. Uh... <laughs> okay, this is probably the worst sounding techniques for your low notes, as you could hear. Of course, it depends on which note you want to sing, how low is your voice, if you mix it with chest and where in the song this note actually is. Maybe it doesn't sound much useful at the start, but trust me, this is one of the most important techniques for every bass singer. But before we'll go into how and why, let's look into what Walker Fry actually is. Vocal fry is created when you're loosely closing your vocal cords so the air can flow through slowly, creating the pulsing sound. That's why it's also called pulse register. This is also the technique that Tim Storms used to set the world record for the lowest note sung by human. It's G minus 7, by the way. Yeah. G minus 7. It's seven octaves and two semitones below the lowest note on the piano. You would have to expand the piano to the left side with almost whole another piano 
Do you hear what I'm saying here? It's G minus seven. What the f? Okay, let's calm down. Back to the topic. I won't go into more details. I'm not a scientist. If you want to know more about this, Google it. There is a lot of articles about it, but this is all you have to know for the theoretic part. Apart from all the other techniques that I'm going to be talking about in this series, this is the one most of you are already using sometimes when you speak. Every time your voice is tired, your vocal cords tend to use this register because it's easier for the muscles. Also, Americans seem to speak a lot in this register. I don't know why. You can hear this technique a lot, for example, in country music, when singers start the phrase with a slide from the fry first octave. I can you begin to count the theories? Or you can hear it from bass singers like Jeff and Tim. As I said, I don't use this technique much for my recordings or my live performances because it doesn't have that much resonance and even if you bass boost it with EQ, it doesn't sound that good. And why is that? Well, you are creating a fundamental frequency that is really low, but the harmonic series of that note are so loud that they overthrow the fundamental. And even if you amplify the bass on your mic, it can't find much to amplify in the first place. Trust me, I tried it a lot. But, I said, it is one of the most important techniques for every bass singer. Why? Technique number two, chest fry mix. Uh... After some time, when you train your chest voice and your vocal fry, those two registers can connect. And what I mean by that? There are actually two types of chest fry mix. Fried chest and chest fry. When you first try vocal fry, most of the time the primary place of the resonance will be your head. After some time and practice, you can learn how to move this resonance lower into your chest. That's called chest fry. It's basically still fry, but with much better resonance and louder fundamental note. Then there's fried chest. As I said in the last video, you can amplify your low notes with a forward placement. That is great. But when you try to sing those very last notes of your chest voice, there is just no way you can put them forward. It's just too low. You have a tendency to put your head down. Don't worry, everybody does that. And you're stuck on the weak sounding, breathy chest. Well, exactly for this, you have fried chest. You sing those very last notes of your chest register and sing them together with the same note in the chest fry. It's basically a mix of chest and chest fry, like mix of the mix. <laughs> if you have no idea what I'm talking about here and think that there's no way you can possibly learn this, it's okay, it sounds confusing and complicated, but stick around for the rest of the video, I will clarify. I have a few examples for you that can help you get your head around it at least. In the description, there's a link to one of my unavailable videos. Some of you remember, it was online only for 24 hours. And in that video, I recorded myself reaching E1 in fried chest. My voice was really low that day and the connection of the mixed fry and chest was almost undetectable. If you give it a look, I was using pure chest until like B or B flat and then I started to put more chest fry to the note all the way to the low E. This was unusual for me. Most of the time, if I'm really warmed up, I can maybe reach F sharp with fried chest, so don't get too excited. The best example of an amazing fried chest is from the live performance of Home Free singing Man of Constant Sorrow. This note is not in the YouTube version, so you have to see the live one. I was lucky to hear it with my own ears last year in Prague. This version is semitone higher than the YouTube one, so Tim ends the song with insane slide from F2 to F1, from chest to chest fry mix. And I'm telling you, on Tim's level, it's unbelievable, you can't even tell the difference from chest. Have a look. 
The last example I'm gonna show you is by Paul David Kennemer, who mastered this technique during his singing career. In the song Old Ship of Zion, there is a great example of both fried chest and chest fry. You're gonna hear him sing in his chest voice, then he slips to B1 in fried chest, then back to his chest, and then he sings an amazing E1 in chest fry. Listen to it. I could hear as he called my name Get on board, on board. It's the old ship of Zion I know what you're thinking But Tommy, the B1 must have been chest It sounded so clean well, yeah, that's the most amazing thing about it. This guy, believe it or not, is actually a baritone. He trained himself to his limits and mastered this technique so well that almost no one can tell the difference. Well, there you have it. We explain what the chest fry mix is. Now, let's get into the real part. Tips, starting with Walker Fry. Tip number one. Walker Fry training. The best way that I know to practice vocal fry is sing in this register whenever you have the possibility. Play some songs with really low notes and try singing along with them using this register. It's not gonna sound good and will be frustrating for people around you, so don't do it in public. Over time, you will be able to stay on pitch more stably. And that is the important part also for learning chest fry mix. Because if your fry isn't stable, your mix won't be either. Work on your pitch and stability. There are not that many good warm-ups for vocal fry. One that I know is pick some low note that you know you can hit and then slide down all the way to the area where it's not even a real note. Something like this. Apart from that, just play some notes on the piano or a guitar and try to sing those notes as long and as stable as you can. As always, it takes time. And remember, water. Tip number two. Switching the fry resonance from your head to your chest. After you manage to stabilize your vocal fry, you can start focusing on moving the resonance. For some people, it's intuitive. For some, it's not. I don't exactly know how to teach you how to do this, because every voice is different, but I have a pretty good exercise that will help you to find your way at least. Start on one of your low chest notes and then slide down to your vocal fry while still trying to keep the resonance in your chest. First, it will seem impossible you will hear that crack when you switch those two registers, but over time and with some practice, that bound between those two will disappear and it starts to sound like this. Uh... You can exercise the same thing, but opposite. You will start on your chest fry and then slide back to your chest. But for this, you have to be able to access the chest fry mix on command. The great example I can show you of a perfect switch from fried to chest fry to chest is, like always, Tim Faust showing off his bass in the live performance of Your Man. You all probably know this clip already. Here it is. You got it, man. Boom. Good Lord, feel the rumble. Lock the door and tear the lights I know, he's freaking good. After you will practice this over and over, your muscles will remember the placement 
that you want to reach and you will be able to do it on command. There's no actual limit to your chest fry mix, but the more you practice, the less fry you will have to put into these notes and you will be able to sink lower with it. And again, lot of water. Tip number three. Stabilizing your chest fry mix. Once you find your chest fry mix and you are able to do it on command, you are not done. Not at all. Now comes the most important part. Stabilization. Okay, so you are able to hit the note you wanted with chest fry like that. But when you do, you kind of splatter around and you can't hold the right pitch. The only thing you can really do are those slides from chest to chest fry mix. And that's a problem. Because it's like having a chest A1, but when you want to sing it, you kind of singing G and B and C and all over, and you sound like malfunctioning truck engine. This is the part where I'm trying to get better right now. For this, there's nothing you can do but practice, practice and practice. In my song Tosoko and Tio Witcher, if you remember, I started the lead on some really low notes. The first sentence, when a humble bard, has a G-sharp one in it, which is just too low for me. So for this sentence, I switch to chest fry mix. When then it continues with grace to ride along, which has just B flat one in it. That I can manage in chest sometimes, so the rest of this low part is in chest. With the exception of A in the word along, which is on F1. For this, I also switched to chest fry. Along came this but when I have to hold a long stable note in chest fry, that is something entirely different. I usually choose a different technique, like growl or subharmonics, for this, because to hold a note in chest fry mix in a stable manner is really difficult for me especially when I'm singing live. Exercise that I practice to stabilize it is just singing along with some songs in this register and picking some random note and trying to hold it as stable and as long as I can. And yes, this won't prepare you for the amount of breath you are going to have while singing live or the vowel or the volume how you have to sing it in. So practice and practice tip number four all the tips from the previous video that's right all the tips that i've talked about in the previous video also applied for this one train on your own have a good support for your notes be relaxed relaxation is even more important with chest fry mix trust me it makes such a difference placement is probably the hardest because if you try to hold the resonance of your chest fry in your chest while trying to put the placement forward into your mask you tend to put the resonance back to your head and switch to walker fry this is something that i can't really do and it will probably take a lot of time to manage it like tim or paul but practice makes perfect and don't forget water Okay guys, that's all for today's video. I believe that you will put this information to good use. I haven't seen that many people talk about it. If you have any questions, put them in the comments. I will try to answer as many as I can. Big thanks to all my Patreons. Your help is always appreciated. Thank you so much. For those who don't know, I have a Patreon with great benefits such as behind the scenes videos, karaoke versions of my songs, my arrangements so check it out if you want to see more videos like this subscribe to my channel like this video share it everywhere and next time we will cover one of the best sounding vocal techniques for bass singing ever you know what i'm talking about it is i need to get water Oh, there it is. So, so I don't. Let's go! Yeah. <laughs>
You can hear this technique a lot, for example, in country music, when a singer starts to play. <laughs> what? But before we, <laughs> but before we'll go into how and why, let's have a look at what vocal fry actually is. But before we'll go in, <laughs> but be. But before we'll go into how and why, let's fuck. But before we'll go into how and why, let's look into what Walker Fry actually is. Uh -huh. But before we'll go into how and why, let's look into what work But before we'll go <laughs> fuck, what is with this sentence? Uh But before we'll go into how and why, let's look into what Walker Fry actually is. Yes. This is also the technique team <laughs> Wait, break. This is also the technique Tim Storms Storms. After some shoot. <clears throat> <sighs> oh shit. Pitch. Okay. <laughs> Pitch. Pitch. Oh. <laughs> what the Okay, this is probably the worst sounding techniques. What? What? I didn't hear anything. I won't go into more details. I'm not a scientist. If you want to know more about this, go. <laughs> okay, right now. <coughs> oh. Uh... <laughs>